Hello and welcome to uh, installment number three, I believe, of the 1984 Criticisms Practice, uh, Essay Practice Unit, I guess we can call it. Um, and today we are focusing on sociological criticism. And if you recall, sociological criticism is an umbrella term for a number of different sort of sub-criticisms or sub-categories. Uh, and we will take a look at a few of them today. <clears throat> Excuse me, not all of them, I don't think. I'll break, uh, I'll try to, I'm going to try and keep this under 15 minutes. Um, so I don't have to split it, but also just to kind of make it more manageable um, for you guys. So, um, Marxist, feminist, and historical criticism are all part of are all under the sociological uh, umbrella and I'm not quite sure why I left it off this title slide here but so is Jungian okay so archetypal criticism um, which I think is its own thing this, this slideshow might be a little bit messed up but anyway uh, it's not um, it's not super important that they remain separate uh, okay, so Carl Jung, we talked about him before. He uh, in he came up with the idea. Oh, sorry, he didn't come up with the idea. He popularized, repopularized the idea of archetypes, which are, uh, if you recall, archetypes are patterns that exist in literature and storytelling across cultures, to the point where it seems to be that sort of humans are hardwired to create these type of characters, to create these kind of stories that, that repeat themselves across across humanity, okay? So he narrowed it down, Young narrowed it down to, I think there's 12 um, sort of character types um, that, um, that exist in, in literature. So a quick Google will reveal those with their, their various traits. Um, and so something you could do would be to uh, research those various archetypes. Um, so if we were in class, we would have done a couple things here and you can do them uh, now just to kind of get an idea of what young, uh, what Jungian archetypes are about. Um, a good way to do that is to think about yourself. So um, young, um, came up with the with the, the list of different sort of character types uh, and it's I think it's instructive to kind of consider your own personality your own traits and and see where you might fit in um, in Jung's kind of universe there okay so that'd be the first thing we did there is online somewhere a quiz a young archetype quiz where you uh, make selections and it comes back and tells you which one you are um, you can probably find that fairly easily. But anyway, that's just kind of like a warm-up activity. Um, next here on the slide, choose any three characters from the novel and choose what archetypes fit them. So this, again, we want to be able to kind of think about the novel, apply uh, this criticism to the novel. And so you're going to want a main character. So you're probably looking at Winston, Julia, and O'Brien. Um, and so... Basically, what I would like you to consider is obviously what Jungian archetype they are, or, or perhaps there's two that fit, and that's fine. Um, and just a little bit of a justification for, you know, why you think that. Quotations would be ideal if this was an essay situation. You would need to have quotations, absolutely, because that is, um, you know, that's how... How, that's how you prove things in an essay. Um, but for our purposes in this <clears throat> incredibly effective distance learning, um, you know, just to kind of just thinking about it, just making reference to things in the novel that make you, that, that sort of solidify your belief that Winston is the, the hero or, or whatever um, would be good enough. Okay, so that's, uh, that's Carl Jung first. That's something we probably would not have done. Okay, microcosm. Here is the big one. Okay, and I might end on this one because I think I all have a lot to say. And we're already at five minutes here. 
Okay, now, obviously you can forget about that first bit there, but what you need to do for microcosm, if you remember, just briefly, microcosm is where you look at and only at the elements of the society that Orwell created, okay? So, you know, just very briefly, the elements of the society that Orwell created would be surveillance, it would be propaganda, it would be misinformation, um, it would be, um, you know, um, the, the political class, uh, a power concentrated into a small into a small group of people, and an unwitting populace. Um, those kind of things are all part of the society that Orwell created, the internal society in um, Oceana, in Airstrip One, in Winston's life, in the society of the novel. Now, the key with um, the key with microcosm analysis then is to, once you've done that, is to compare it to real life. And I've been posting things on the, somewhere on Slack, uh, every time I see an example of anything Orwellian, I mean, the term Orwellian exists because he was so prescient, if you will, he was so, um, um, his, his prophecy has turned out to be to be very, very true, um, so much that there is a term called Orwellian uh, for that situation. So I've been posting uh, various examples. The most recent was where the state of Georgia, it certainly appears as though the state of Georgia was just fudging their spreadsheets of their COVID data to make it look like the cases were declining, when in fact the days were all out of order and there's really no way it could have been um, an accident. So again, Winston Smith, um, Winston Smith as a as sort of a, a, you know, his job is kind of to go back in time and make things um, look a certain way. Um, it's hard to argue that the, the, the Georgia example is, um, is anything but a, a direct example of the microcosm from 1984 showing up in today's society. Similarly, the example I posted to Slack that you might have seen um, from earlier on in the in the pandemic when Jared Kushner in the United States um, said something about the strategic reserve of masks, medical masks, um, that was blatantly incorrect at the time he said it and then by the next day um, somebody had edited the government website so that it appeared as though what he said was correct and that I don't know that I've ever seen a more striking obvious blatant example of you know Orwellianism if I could use that word uh, ever so Somebody, Winston Smith, went back in. Somebody got an order to say, Jared Kushner said this, it needs to be correct. And somebody went into the website, the government website, and edited it to make it appear as though what Jared Kushner said was correct. So, I mean, I, it's, just, it's just sort of mind-blowing that something like that... Um, that something as far-fetched, when you read it in 1984, it seems so far-fetched, and you'd say, no, of course, people would, would, would realize that, and they would know, um, and yet it happens, and it seems that perhaps some people do know, it's obviously on Twitter, they had the screenshots of, of before and after the edit, but it just doesn't seem to matter, it didn't, it wasn't a major story, it wasn't even a big deal, so, um, these are the kind of things you need to think about when doing microcosm analysis. So, once you've re sort of reviewed the notes that you've created, um, again, just making point form notes about the society, the things, the major things prevalent in society, as I mentioned before, surveillance, propaganda, etc. Um, then you start to connect them to real life, modern life. Um, in Great Britain, in England, there is a... Um, 
a vast network of closed circuit television cameras. They are highly, there is a, a, a large amount of surveillance in Britain. Um, there's many connections to be made with China, the modern day Chinese government. There's many, many connections to be made, especially with misinformation with the Trump administration in the United States. So I think that if this is something, if, if 1984, if you really enjoyed it, um, and I know it is, it is, you know, it is a bit of a, uh, a bu of a bummer of a book, um, and I don't really mean to be to be bringing you down, especially in in a time like this. But if 1984 was uh, your jam, so to speak, um, I really think there's a lot to um, there's a lot to be said. There's a lot of material for for a microcosm analysis um, essay for 1984. There are so many examples of the society Orwell created uh, coming to pass in modern times and throughout history. It doesn't even have to be in modern times. Any you know any period since the book was published, um, there's there's a quite a famous story of, I believe it was Stalin, or one of those Russian leaders who, uh, in an early form of Photoshop, would edit out uh, edit out people from photographs uh, that he had had murdered uh, for for opposing him or, or for perceived um, slights against him uh, which is a, a big way of how he consolidated power um, and, and again so that you know that would also qualify as a sort of a microcosm analysis so once you have your sort of main list there you can compare them to um, you can compare them to today's society, but again, uh, the key with an essay like this would be what does it say about, um, you know, that's the first step. Yes, Orwell predicted the future, so what does that say? What was his message? Um, was there, is there, what does that say about the overall message of the novel and our society, as it says on this slide here? Are there patterns? Why do you think the author might have done this? Was it a warning? Was Orwell just a super smart guy who saw the way society was heading way back in 1940, uh, in the 1940s, and somehow predicted exactly what it would be like in the t you know 2020? Um, it's it's tough to believe, uh, but we want to we want to find sort of a bigger message. And any thesis that you came up with using microcosm analysis would need to make some kind of point about that. It's not just that you're uh, uh, a thesis of 1984, things that happened in 1984 are happening today, a thesis of just that would not be very good. So you need to take that observation and you need to provide a commentary on that. And we'll talk about this, we'll talk about thesis, uh, creating thesis statements after we're done um, looking at the book. But you need to add a sort of a commentary, you need to add your own thoughts onto that, a, a why. So things are similar between the book and now, why is that? Why could it be? Uh, what is the what is the meaning or what is the point of of your of observation that that the societies are very similar? Okay, um, we're at thirteen and a half minutes here, so um, I think I'll wrap it up there. Again, this is an extremely fertile ground for um, for essays and for thinking about the book. So if you've read the book, and I, and I, I think that, uh, that many of you have, um, spend some time um, making some quick notes about the Society in 1984 and do some research and figure out uh, what societies are like around the world today and try to, um, try to make some connections there. Um, okay, I'll wrap it up uh, for today. Um, I will probably do another video on Monday of next week and if you guys want to keep going with the, the sort of little rough, rough note tasks from the slideshow, that would be excellent. Okay, hope everyone is well and I will talk to you later.